In the bouncing heart of Southeast Asia, Buzzworld landed for a tremendous first time international mobility bus and coach exhibition. I have a very good feeling. Buzzworld being right on time in an extremely challenging era for a country of 260 million inhabitants. It became the key factor for a smash hit in the core of the collective transport and bus and coach market. The first edition welcomed the biggest and most popular bus and coach manufacturers and bodybuilders of Indonesia. Mercedes-Benz, Volvo buses, New Armada and Luxana. All of the key brands were here and 7,000 unique visitors came to the venue together with the international professional press. Launching new products like the Volvo B11R or the Mercedes-Benz OF917, updating the audience and the press open air ceremonies for new buses and presenting companies with accessories and components. It all took part in the JI Expo on Buzzworld Indonesia 2019. The market for buses and coaches in Indonesia was clearly waiting for an exhibition like this. The two core organizing partners of Buzzworld International, the Federation of Young Bus and Coach Operators, IPOMI, and the Federation of Bus Bodybuilders in Indonesia, Ascarindo, did a great job in bringing together the operators, the decision makers, and all lovers of buses and coaches in the country. Checking out the latest designs of buses and coaches, components and spare parts on Buzzworld is easily combined with attending presentations, seminars and expert classes at a conference organized by Buzzworld Academy. 350 people from 30 countries came to listen to speakers and international mobility specialists from more than 15 countries. Buzzworld Southeast Asia 2019 exceeded all expectations and was a real bullseye for the bus and coach community. This is Jakarta, Indonesia, one of the world's biggest megacities in an urban cluster of 30 million inhabitants. In the bouncing heart of Southeast Asia, Buzzworld landed for a tremendous first time international mobility bus and coach exhibition. I have a very good feeling. Buzzworld being right on time in an extremely challenging era for a country of 260 million inhabitants. It became the key factor for a smash hit in the core of the collective transport and bus and coach market. The first edition welcomed the biggest and most popular bus and coach manufacturers and bodybuilders of Indonesia. Mercedes-Benz, Volvo buses, New Armada and Luxana. All of the key brands were here and 7,000 unique visitors came to the venue together with the international professional press. Opportunity. 
Launching new products like the Volvo B11R or the Mercedes-Benz OF917. Updating the audience and the press, open air ceremonies for new buses and presenting companies with accessories and components. It all took part in the JI Expo on Bus World Indonesia 2019. The market for buses and coaches in Indonesia was clearly waiting for an exhibition like this. The two core organizing partners of Buzzworld International, the Federation of Young Bus and Coach Operators, IPOMI, and the Federation of Bus Bodybuilders in Indonesia, Asker Rindo, did a great job in bringing together the operators, the decision makers, and all lovers of buses and coaches in the country. Checking out the latest designs of buses and coaches, components and spare parts on Buzzworld is easily combined with attending presentations, seminars and expert classes at a conference organized by Buzzworld Academy. 350 people from 30 countries came to listen to speakers and international mobility specialists from more than 15 countries. Buzzworld Southeast Asia 2019 exceeded all expectations and was a real bullseye for the bus and coach community. Good afternoon and welcome to all speakers and attendees who are joining us at Buzzword Southeast Asia webinar series, session six. Welcome to the webinar held by Game Indonesia and Buzzword Foundation. I am Bun Liun, your MC today. Before we start the program, let us welcome Mr. Bakili, the director of Game Indonesia to deliver an opening speech. Mr. Baki, the stage is yours now. Okay, satu, dua, tiga. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Selamat siang, para narasumber dan bapak ibu yang hadir melalui live zoom hari ini di Baswell Southeast Asia webinar yang untuk yang seri ke-6. Thank you to all speakers today and supporting panels to join with us. I would like to I would like to welcome our honorable guest today, Mr. E. G. Wei, Samsi Sunarta, Head of Transportation Agency of Province of Bali Province. And Mr. Stephen Arman Technical Director of CV Laksana, and Mr. Al Andi Utario Putro, Director of Mayasari Bhakti Utama, and Mr. James Demand, Managing Director of Baswell Foundation. And Baswell Foundation's media partners in Indonesia, Askarindu, Ipomi, Masyarakat Transportasi Indonesia, and ITDP. And special for all moderators, Mr. Hari Sudiadi and all audience. Uh, salam sejahtera dan selamat siang untuk Bapak Ibu semuanya. Puji syukur kehadiran Tuhan Yang Maha Esa sehingga dengan kemurahan hatinya, kita semua bisa berkumpul di Buzzword Webinar sesi ke-6. 
dalam keadaan sehat walafiat. Merupakan suatu kehormatan bagi kami untuk menyambut Anda semua dalam acara Baswo Southeast Asia Webinar Series Sesi 6 dengan tema How are preparations for a ship to the bus electric buses Indonesia atau bagaimana persiapan untuk mengalihkan ke bus elektrik di Indonesia. Bapak dan Ibu yang kami hormati, Basul adalah pameran B2B terbesar di dunia yang berfokus untuk industri bus dan komponen maupun jasa pelayanannya. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The development of COVID-19 in Indonesia is still well controlled. Indeed, there has an increase of new cases because of Omicron variant. But overall, 80% of infected patients are imported imported case now. COVID-19 cases from Omicron in Indonesia are still relatively low. Today, there have been 882 people infected with the Omicron variant, and 90%, sorry, 80% of the imported case and has no fatality case from variant in Indonesia. The national COVID positive positivity rate is still around 2%, which is below the which WO band much of 5%. So we are very grateful to our Indonesian government as the government has taken extraordinary anticipatory step to avoid a spike of in the new COVID case from Omicron. Thus, we are be able to help set a Baswo South Asian exhibition in the March in this time. The government Indonesia is targeting the nation vaccination coverage of 200 million people to be conflicting in March, in the March 2022. Indonesia now is undergoing for boosters, booster vaccination starting January 22nd. So we hope uh, during the March, the exhibition will be going on safety. Uh, as the government has allowed us to hold activity with some precaution to keep safety for the people. Hence, we are planning to hold bus world event offline this year from 2021 until 25 March it's GI Expo Kemayoran. Now we have a five uh, sorry, we have a five carousery, big carousery at a big auto bodybuilder in Indonesia will join with us. Uh, like today, PT Laksana, New Armada, Adiputro, and Tentrum, and many other sporting uh, industry have confirmed to join in Bus World's Southeast Asia exhibition in March. We will definitely implement, implement health protocol to ensure the success of the bus war exhibition. For the year 2002, 2002, Indonesia is appointment as the host of G20 presidency where the men's agenda is join economy recovery in order to realize a stronger, more inclusive and sustainable world growth economy governance. Holding this exhibition is one of the programs from our government for preparation going on forward to the G20 Forum in Bali. In this location to hold this event will be in Bali. Today, we are inviting Mr. Ige Gusti Ige W. Samsi Sunarto, the head of transportation agency from Bali province to share with us the preparation of the EV buses for the G20 Forum later. And CV Laksana is one of the largest bodybuilder in Indonesia, has been successful in exporting to several countries. Currently, CV Laksana also prepared EV buses that will be used to several regions in Indonesia. In addition, for some following bus work webinar, we'll be also present some famous bodybuilder in the next session. And Mayasari Utama is one of our biggest buses operator in Indonesia. 
uh, which is the uses by the Trans Jakarta right now. Hari ini kita mengadakan Baswell Southeast Asia webinar dengan sesi yang keenam dan tersisa dengan dua sesi berikut kami juga akan menghadirkan beberapa bodybuilder maupun ATPM yang akan ikut serta di dalam pameran berikut dan kami harapkan semua hadirin yang akan menikmati presentasi yang menarik para narasumber yang luar biasa hari ini dan dapat turut dan turut serta serta ber, uh, mengadakan diskusi berikut. Air kata kami harapkan anda semua menikmati Baswa South East Asia webinar sesi yang ke 6 pada hari ini. Thank you and join with us today. Saya Bakili dari GM Indonesia. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Baki, for the welcome and opening speech of today's program. Ladies and gentlemen, we are presenting Buzzword Southeast Asia webinar series, session six, with the discussion on how are preparations for the shift to electric buses in Indonesia. And the main session will be managed by Mr. Hari Suryadi. I would like to introduce the name of our three speakers today and a short introduction of our moderator. Our speakers are Bapak I. Gewe Samsi Gunarta, Bapak Stefan Arman, and Bapak Andi Utario Putro. Welcome to all speakers and thank you for joining us today. Our moderator, Mr. Hari Suryadi, is a journalist and media engagement specialist. He is the founder of Tempo SMS and Tempo Witness, a citizen journalism practices with Tempo. Not only that, he is also a trainer on journalism, communication, and creative writing on various organizations. And last but not least, Mr. Harry is an instructor or lecturer plus Missy, a vocational education institute. Thank you, Bahari, for being with us today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I will hand the stage over to Mr. Hari for our next session. Pak Hari, silakan. Terima kasih, Bu Liyun. Sama-sama, uh, Pak. Selamat siang. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh semua, teman-teman. Uh, semoga sehat-sehat semua ya. Saya akan membantu memoderasi diskusi yang ini. I will, I will moderate the discussion today and uh, I will introduce, uh, we have about an hour discussion with a presentation, 15 minutes each uh, presenters and we will have 25 minutes for Q&A. So be prepared to, to type your question to the uh, Q&A Q&A uh, uh, chat and the uh, Q&A. Okay, <laughs> our first speakers will be Pak Samsi Gunarta. He is the head of transportation agency of Bali province. And he will talk about uh, regulation and realization of the electric vehicle implementation in Bali. And he was, uh, he's graduated uh, from Parahyang and Catholic University yeah, for Doctor in Engin of Engineering and Transportation and has master degree on transportation study at Lincoln University, Canterbury, New Zealand. And uh, he's been uh, working as head of Division Land Acquisition Facilitation Center for Strategic Region, Regional Infrastructure Development Agency since 2015 and 2019 and uh, yeah that's that's a uh, part of the you can you can read also on the screen and uh, but samsi your time is uh, 15 minutes please thank you very much pahari for the introduction so yeah, I, I would like to let you know about uh, the progress of our uh, electrification and uh, how we are going to deal with the need for the bus, uh, the electric bus in Bali. So please allow me to share the screen. Uh, can you see it? 
Yes, yes. Okay. Seems to. Ah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay, I, I, I will talk about the vision and strategy to develop electric vehicle ecosystem in Bali, and I would like to address uh, mostly about the bus uh, uh, migration. However, it seems that a, a bit a bit uh, uneasy for us because the technology uh, has not been exist uh, in in our area or maybe in Jakarta in Indonesia for the moment. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell about the background, existing conditions, and importance of transition toward the EV and opportunity. Also, main targets and a strategy we are using to achieve the, the targets. As you know, the Bali is uh, one of the uh, uh, global tourism destination. Then we have uh, now facing the COVID-19 pandemic, which creates significant impact to Bali economy. Then the second is uh, the economy recovery must consider environmental uh, bearing capacity and sustainability as the objective on Bali uh, climate neutrality. That, that why we are we are looking at uh, to uh, going faster to the new era of Bali, which is uh, more cleaner and uh, becoming one of the premium uh, tourism area. Then we are lucky because we have uh, provided uh, the regulation for uh, EV migration, the, uh, which uh, come uh, under the governor regulation uh, number uh, 48 year uh, 2019. That's becoming our base uh, to work on the EV, on migration from ICE to EV. As you see, the numbers of uh, visit in Bali until 2019 is uh, uh, growing uh, quite, quite well. So, uh, but we have big problem in 2020. That's why the trends might be uh, changed a little bit. However, we believe that this will be, this will be uh, shortly recovered. The vehicle statistic of in Bali, you can see that 87% uh, of our vehicle is actually uh, uh, motorcycles and only 9% is uh, cars, passenger cars, and then we have only small portion of trucks and buses. So around, uh, that was the data in uh, 2020, so around 9,205 9, buses in Bali. The numbers of electric electric vehicles and it is uh, it was introduced in early tw uh, 2017, uh, increasing quite in good uh, in good steps. We have uh, doubled the numbers uh, since uh, 2000, 2017 to 2018, and then uh, significant increases in, uh, in 2019. In 2020, we recorded uh, around 1,000 motorcycles already uh, available in Bali. Uh, this is the map of distribution of uh, uh, electric electric uh, supply station for the uh, uh, especially for the car. Yeah. So now we are we are having around 109. Uh, electric uh, electric station, which is uh, provided by fast fast charging point. Why it is considered to to uh, important to migrate to EV? Because Indonesia has ratified the uh, the strategy to achieve uh, low carbon development. Then we are in Bali. Actually, we have a quite strong. Uh, uh, needs to immigrate because the biggest uh, proportion of uh, carbon dioxide produced by uh, generated by transportation and uh, uh, energy industry. So it is quite a big opportunity for us to actually 
to suppress the uh, uh, CO2 emission by migrating the transportation to EV. As you see, yeah, uh, we have uh, around a double in 2019 to 2020, then uh, 2021, it is uh, increases to uh, around 1,000. So we have the last numbers was around 731. That was in November. So I remember uh, we have a numbers of 300 motorcycles come with the fleet of Grab. So it is becoming 1,000. So we we are actually uh, uh, closing our year with uh, meeting the targets of uh, electrification for motorcycle. When we see uh, how how people would uh, like to use motorcycle, uh, electric motorcycle that uh, especially for domestic tourists, they are, they are likely to have 41% uh, 41, 41 of domestic tourists would like to use motorcycle and 40% of international uh, tourists would like to use uh, uh, EV, uh, EV motorcycles. And the, now we, we are looking at the preferred transportation means for tourists. It seems that the uh, rent motorcycle is quite high. So why? Um, uh, we are we are focusing actually on motorcycle most more than uh, other means of transport in Bali. These are the demand conditions in renting electric vehicle in Bali, especially uh, done uh, provided by domestic uh, visitors or international visitors. The influencing factors including uh, electric uh, charging location. It is, uh, uh, if, if we see the maximum uh, five, yeah, a scale of five, then uh, that will be the most important uh, factors to be provided. And the second one is the rental cost, yeah. And the third, uh, electric cost. And uh, the, the fourth, uh, the, the provision of battery swap. And the fifth was renewable energy sources that, that is provided uh, in the uh, for the uh, power power of uh, uh, Bali power plant, so uh, it is uh, uh, surveyed by the World Resource Institute, and then we are using this number as our reference at the moment. In our this the the action plan, which is actually under development at the moment. Now uh, we, we haven't put in the bus as our target because we, we know that the, the situation of difficulties in, in providing buses for uh, EV buses at the moment, that why the focus is still on the motor, uh, for the motorcycle and cars. So uh, this are uh, the figure that we need to achieve in uh, from 2022 to 2026. So we are, we are expecting we can migrate around 56,095 motorcycles and 6,835 cars in uh, 2026. This figure is actually based on uh, optimistic target, but without uh, doing any uh, intervention, a special intervention to accelerate the uh, uh, migration. From the strategy that we are, uh, we are using, we are focusing on uh, five pillars for the EV uh, regional plan. Then the first pillar is uh, doing the, uh, we, are, we are managing management and research. And the second uh, pillar is infrastructures, it's including EV, the provision of EV battery charging, swapping and electricity infrastructure. The third pillar will be industry and battery especially for EV manufacturers, then EV battery industry uh, provider. The, the fourth pillar will be human resources. We need to provide the uh, uh, appropriate and adequate skill of uh, human resources needed to support EV. And then we, we put uh, marketing and communication as a pillar five, because it is quite important actually to shift uh, the attitude and also shifting the, the habit of uh, local and how to use uh, EV more than uh, ICE. For first pilots, 
uh, we are doing uh, we are looking at the prob uh, prob uh, probability of doing a zoning as a sandboxing especially for EV infrastructures and EV area so we are we are looking for the five zone in the in the initial stage uh, especially in the tourism tourism area including uh, Nusa Dua Kuta Sanur uh, Ubud and Nusa Penida and then we are looking at the possible uh, financing funding and the business model provided by the uh, to to improve the EV and how we do the uh, uh, calculate or monitor the environmental conservation based on EV then do the standardization and capacity uh, development and pillar 2 we are focusing on infrastructure to be developed uh, especially in uh, plug in EV charging for public and EV battery swap and then EV home EV charging which is uh, easy to use and easy to install because for now for example for cars uh, charging it is not easy for us to to uh, get uh, installed in our houses the, we are looking at filler 3 now we are we are looking at the EV assembly or factory then EV maintenance facility EV conversion facility and EV quality and battery waste handling monitoring. That's why we are now providing uh, provide one specific uh, industrial area, which is uh, provided for EV and uh, green green uh, green industry. In pillar four. We are looking at uh, the stakeholders rescaling, which is uh, pro, uh, for vehicle, for infrastructure and battery waste handling, uh, providing regulation and monitoring, and then accident mitigation. While in pillar five, we are looking at EV marketing and communication, doing the capacity development and ecosystem building, then increasing people awareness on EV, and doing monitoring, evaluation, and learning process. So we need to mon uh, manage all of those in order to uh, change the paradigm of uh, the use of uh, ICE and EV that makes the uh, migration faster. Three EV minutes pass. more, Pak Samsi, ya? Yeah? Iya, yeah, Pak. Uh, these are the... Uh, a corridor provided for uh, buses in in Bali, especially for the urbanized area in uh, Sarbagita. Then you see the main main corridor for the uh, corridor management. These are the scenario testing provided. So these are the corridor for BRT, which is uh, provided actually for EV in the future. Then uh, yeah, some some area, the but the main corridor is actually from uh, Sempidi to Nusa Dua. Then we are looking this one as the first, the, the, the uh, first regional, regional corridor to be uh, prepared. What is our stage in uh, doing the EV bus adoption? Now, what we do, we have 10 units of BRT fleets of Trans Sarbagita, when we have 105 units of BRT fleet of Trans Metro Dewata, we also manage 382 units in land intercity bus and then 652 units of tourism bus services. Then what we are looking at is actually do, now we are looking for the finish, the completed completion of urban mobility plan, take into regulation in Bali. That will be the, the, the base for uh, bus uses, the EV bus uses for uh, corridor, uh, corridor services in Bali. But we are looking at the uh, pilot for first and last mile of urban BRT corridor and then inter-corridor connection using shuttle bus by uh, using the showcase of EV bus service during G20 summit in next year. So we are expecting some of the bus uses in the G20 summit will be uh, provided also in Bali. Then after that, that we, we are looking at the uh, larger uh, possible uh, program. Your time is up, Pak Samsi. Okay, thank you very much, Bapak. Uh, this is the last last uh, uh, 
information that I can uh, can provide for the what we are looking at uh, for the G20. Uh, then you can get the information in the I I, I share to the committee. Then uh, I would be very happy if you have any question. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor MC. Okay, we will we will listening we will listen the second speakers, uh, Stefan Arman. He is the technical director of CV Laksana, and he will talk about the readiness of Caro series and uh, readiness for sustainable sustainable transportation. Pa Arman is uh, is a how many years ago? He working for Sefer Laksana since 2004. And now he is the technical director of uh, Sifi Laksana. And he has a master degree on Purdue University, Indiana, United States. Uh, Pak pa Stefan Arman, silahkan, Pak. Terima kasih, Pak Eri. Um, selamat siang semuanya. Sebentar, saya izin share screen ya. Sudah terlihat ya share screen saya? Sudah, sudah. Oke, okay, um, yeah, first of all, I would like to say uh, thank you so much for Buzzword for giving us, Laksana, the time to present some updates on Laksana journey to prepare the um, electric bus era. Um, I think in the beginning, I would like to talk about the challenges in shifting from ICE bus to electric bus which is, I believe, the bigger part of the challenges will be faced by the operator itself when operating the bus, which I believe it will be laid out uh, extensively by Pak Andi from Mayasari. I think the operator, when they are shifting from diesel bus to ice uh, to electric bus, uh, they will face a lot of challenges, such as the huge in initial investment and also the adjustment on how to operate the bus uh, regularly every day. But nevertheless, uh, there are also some challenges that we, as the bus body producer, uh, are facing in producing electric buses. One aspect is, of course, we have to make sure the bus produced is very cost efficient, both in the initial investment and also on the operating costs. This is also very important to the uh, operators. And of course, we have to make sure that the bus produced will comply to the Indonesian regulation and of course, the bus is safe for the passengers. So at Laksana, we have always committed to continually uh, develop various different types of urban or city buses. And through the years of development, currently we have the most extensive product lineup of city buses in Indonesia, ranging from medium size, big bus, and then also the articulated bus that comes with the various different setup or specifications such as the low entry, high floor, and also the double deckers. Last year, we had the opportunity to launch the first low entry, medium sized city bus in Indonesia, which is an inclusive and efficient solution for urban transportation in Indonesia. Uh, this bus can accommodate passengers with disabilities with ease of access in and out of the bus. And over the years, we have been trusted to collaborate with the bus operators all over Indonesia in providing reliable and safe means of transportation. We have worked together to provide buses in Jakarta with its Transjakarta, also in Surabaya with the Surabaya bus, and then Semarang and other cities all over Indonesia. Last year, uh, we were very relieved um, amid the uh, pandemic to get a big support from the Ministry of Transportation, who has initiated the uh, implementation of the Buy the Surface program in different cities all over Indonesia. It was a very big support for us, especially during these very tough times for the bus industry. And at the same time, we are very proud that our newest concept, the low entry medium bus was adopted for this project also last year. This year, we are hoping and we are actually quite glad to hear that the Buy the Service program initiated by the Ministry of Transportation will be continued with a budget of over 1 trillion rupiah uh, in 2022. 
And I believe some of the buses uh, will be electric ones. And of course, um, all of us in Laksana, we have anticipated the coming of uh, electric bus era in Indonesia. And Laksana will be supportive to this government plan to gradually shifting from ICE or diesel bus to the electric bus. Yeah, since about five years ago, we have done a lot of research and development on our bus body that is more suitable for electric bus. Our aim, of course, is to produce bus uh, body that is light, yet one that is also have a very long lifetime. These two points we believe are the main challenges that we face as a bus producer in the shift to electric bus. Weight of the bus will be very crucial since electric bus generally is two to three tons heavier compared to diesel bus. Even the bus have the same range of over uh, 300 kilometer. And this is due to the current limitation of energy density of the battery, which is about 150 to 200 um, watt hour per kilogram. In Indonesia, we do have considerably constricting regulation on the bus weight. And of course, the operators like Transjakarta would like to maintain the passenger's capacity to be as equal as possible with the diesel ones. So these situations, of course, will force us to make the bus body as light as possible to compensate the heavy batteries on the bus. The second big challenge would be the long lifetime of the bus. Either it is the chassis, the power drive, the batteries, the body and all the system inside the, the bus. It is very, very important to have all these parts uh, too long as uh, long, to have a long lifetime. The main reason is because electric bus has a very high initial investment cost, and which is generally electric bus is about uh, twice or even more expensive than a regular diesel bus. So it's, it's very important to justify this high initial cost with the lower operational and maintenance costs over the bus lifetime. So in the end, it will have the lower total life cycle costs than the diesel bus. For that, in 2019, we have launched the first bus in Indonesia that uses high strength stainless steel structure that is proven to be durable, light, and much more economical than aluminum structure body. We launched this bus, uh, we worked together with Volvo at that time uh, during the, uh, the first uh, bus work uh, in Indonesia. And it was a very important moment for us since this is also at the same time, we launch our next generation of city line product lineup. Through the use of this stainless steel frame and other lightweight panelings, we were able to reduce the bus body weight up to 500 uh, kilogram uh, compared to the, the regular bus that is made by steel. And compared to with the aluminum structured body, we calculate this bus is about 300 kilograms lighter. So the next year in 2020, during the pandemic, we uh, managed to produce about eight units um, of this new city line bus uh, with the stainless steel structure. And we supply this bus to Surabaya and it's still in operation. So we are monitoring very closely to this bus since this is a product that is using stainless steel. And so far, we have seen that it, is, it doesn't have any problems um, with, the, with the structure. And in 2021, we continue our journey um, with developing the electric bus. So we, at that time, we had the chance to collaborate with the, one of the world's biggest electric bus manufacturer, which is BYD. And we work together with its representative in Indonesia, Bakri Auto Parts. And we produce our first electric bus using high floor BRT concept. This bus uses uh, the same high strength stainless steel, uh, but this time we dig more and we try to use an even more lightweight materials, both in the interior and the exterior panelings. And in the end, after the bus is complete, and when we compare to the, uh, the bus that we have produced so far for Transjakarta, 
we managed to save about 1.3 tons of weight lighter. This is um, exclusively from the bus body. Of course, um, one more aspect that is very important that we shouldn't ignore is the uh, safety aspect of the bus. We have applied the uh, Laksana safety standards such as the rollover, the tilt test, and then the seat anchorage test for, for this bus. And then, but then since this is an electric bus, so we believe there should be more attention and higher standard applied, especially in the electrical system. Uh, for that uh, main consideration, we have worked uh, very closely and together with um, like the KNKT and then the Ministry of Transportation and the operators to discuss and review the bus um, electrical system together. So of course, um, this is our journey so far in developing the uh, right electric bus for Laksana. And we are committed to continuously uh, developing both the electric and the um, diesel-based bus in the future to support Indonesia in having a sustainable transportation system, especially uh, in the big cities. I would like to discuss a little bit of uh, non-technical challenges that we have we face as a local industry in Indonesia is, is regarding the import regulation uh, in Indonesia which currently the import duty scheme that applies in Indonesia is such that doesn't really, I think doesn't really support the local manufacturing uh, in developing and producing the electric bus. And as you can see in the stable, the import duty to bring in fully built up electric bus, the import duty is only 5%, whereas to import the electric bus chassis or its component so that it can be assembled and built fully using local body is between 15 up to even the 40%. I'm sure that everyone in the Indonesia stakeholder have the will to, priority, to prioritize local industries. However, with this import duty scheme, I think it will be even more difficult for, for us, the local manufacturers to, to prove that Indonesian can develop and produce high quality buses that is sustainable and safe for Indonesia or even other countries. That will be all my presentation. So thank you so much for the attention. I'll give it back to Pak Hari. Thank, thank you, you, Pak. Thank you, Pak Stefan. Baik, uh, we will continue with our third speaker, uh, Pak Andi Utario Putro. He is the director of PT Maya Sari Bhakti Utama. He will talk about uh, the world of uh, how the bus operator, the challenges for bus operator for electric vehicle bus. And uh, he has a long, long experiences, uh, working experiences you can see in his CV. And uh, yeah, to, I think time is yours, Pa Andi, silakan. Terima kasih Pak Hari. Uh, thank you for the buzzword that uh, give us opportunity to attend in the important webinars uh, today. I try to share our presentation. Can you see Pak Hari? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, PT Mayasari Bhakti Ustama, uh, as an information, is the holding company that one of uh, our subsidiaries is the PT Mayasari Bhakti, uh, which operates around 389 uh, buses in cooperation with uh, Transjakarta. And now we are in the process of uh, settlement or negotiation with a contract with the Transjakarta for operating the electric uh, buses. As an information, so not only my Bhakti, we also have uh, uh, intercity buses that uh, operates in almost in the diesel buses. I start with my presentations. 
Uh, first is the challenge that we have known that the air pollution and climate changes and of course the limitation of non-renewable energy and the blue sky policy or go green is part of the information that we usually hear uh, today and also that part. Shamsi and also uh, uh, Stefan has mentioned before that. And then uh, as part of the uh, developing countries, we, we also face that more than 70% of global municipal bus fleet to be uh, electric bus by 2040. And then of course, the, the seventh thing, the, the seventh thing we have to answer the questions, how Indonesia will target to operate fully electric buses in Indonesia? When, how, and of course, the stakeholders' readiness. According to uh, our experience that we, we, we say some challenges that we have to face in the uh, uh, condition, and in the word as new in the red colors, why? Because, uh, until now, we haven't yet operated uh, electric buses commercially. And then, according to our experience, uh, first in the technology is new for us because we operate uh, now internal combustion engines, including the diesels or CNG buses. And now we convert to electric buses or electric vehicle. So it will be uh, challenging. And then the second challenge, we have to face the new business model, starting from preparations, because we are not only buy or invest or financing the buses itself, but we have to build the energy infrastructure. We have to build the charging system. We have to operate uh, the charging management. We have to know how about the waste of the battery, how about to lead time to, to get the uh, battery changes. And then, of course, uh, operation and technical aspects we have to face with the electric bus, especially, for example, the driver of what the technician everything's about that. And then the third challenge is a new approach. New approach is for the regulators. Of course, we, we, we have to follow the regulations and of course the policy that please uh, accommodate the bus operator to uh, can operate the uh, electric bus. And especially for the electricity providers, because in Indonesia, Jakarta, especially the supply of the electrics only from the PLN, our national electrics uh, company, and there is no alternative energy, or maybe if uh, there is something of blackout of the PLN, we have to prepare about the diesel or genset to, to supply the electric buses. Of course, the new approach uh, have to face with the bus operators, bus dealers, and of course the bank and uh, our leasing company because it's uh, high investments, and also for the insurance company to understand about the complication or challenging of the electric buses. The fourth is the new culture and habit because uh, we face the time to convert from the diesel to gas uh, fuel or uh, CNG to electrics. We have the time, we have to adopt, uh, we have to make uh, adaptations. And then the second, we need the different skill of human resource to support about that. And of course, to make a success about the, uh, the change of the culture from the uh, dust, uh, diesel buses to the electric bus, we have uh, to prepare the system and procedure related to electric buses. Our challenge next is a new uncertainty. Why we say the new uncertainty? We have to face about the electric city quality and supply. It uh, has to be uh, prepared in the futures. And then, and then the secondly, we as bus operator, especially us as a private uh, bus operators, we need the clear contracts because the contracts between, for example, between us with Transjakarta is clear in the beginning is as first step. And then we follow the the next step, because in the contract, we, we say about the tariff, we say about the uh, length of the period of and everything. The new uncertainty we said about the return on investment, of course, is the back to back with the investment risk because the price for the investment is very high. And then the fifth uh, uncertainty is the financing support. 
because uh, a bank or also for the leasing company is a challenging but the uh, how to make a financial scheme that match with the bus operators and then the third is a uh, operation risk because uh, in the operation we have to face about the charging system we have to face about the maintenance how about the battery management spare part and battery supply charging back up how about the accidents in the uh, in the road when because the the electric bus not in the special line in the uh, busway like uh, usual and then the last is the our challenge is, is new anticipations anticipation is related with the technology changes especially battery we don't know about the after three or four or five years how about the battery because battery get the portion around 60 or 70 percent of the price of the EV buses and we have to consider about that and then of course for the replacement of course about the uh, backup of the battery and then for the regulations new anticipation uh, uh, we need the roadmap for bus fleet by propulsion type in the futures for example more than 20 years because we cannot uh, say after we try about the EV bus and we face some challenges and then after that we come back again to the diesel buses i think uh, we have to make the step by step uh, planning for about that to roadmap and then how about the regulation changes and government support and of course the political aspect is very important uh, about the operational or preparation of the electric buses plus in the next uh, slide we say that uh, the investment i try to divide the, there is a, there are five uh, factors that we have to consider first is a bus investment include the battery in the in this positions is very high investments yeah around 5.2 uh, billion rupiah for one uh, if we buy and then we have to do about calculation about the return on investment how about the repayment and how about the, the development or the technology development for uh, e-bus and battery. And then for the next is uh, charging system investment. We have to build secure and reliable uh, charging uh, infrastructure uh, and it depends on the quality of the uh, electric supply from the PLM. And then we have also faced about the type of chargers. For example, if we have a uh, or five kind or three kinds brand of uh, EV bus. Is it uh, different for about the charging station? If different, then of course, it's impact for the our investment. And then is uh, we have to face about the charging management and the strategy. And then the third investment we have to prepare with the system and HR and also for the training and development for the driver monitoring and control and how we minimize the accident in the road. We also identify about the working capital. For example, that we have the cooperation in Jakarta with Transjakarta, for example, minimum we have to provide three or four months working capital for the EV buses. And then we also uh, arrange or manage about the cash flow and a conversable. And of course, we expect based on the reset, the operation cost is lower than diesel buses. But for us, we haven't yet implemented and of course, after we implemented in six months or maybe one year, we can see how about the uh, operating costs uh, about the EV buses. And then the fifth, uh, we think about the depot investment, pool investment and arrangement, because we have make a area for charging system and stations. It's a different with the uh, area for the bus to park. And then, we think to separate it area with the diesel and CNG buses. And of course, it impacts of the real of depot and the impact is for the investment. I try to identify some stakeholders that we have to uh, coordinate for, for the electric buses that maybe we can share the information to audience about the importance of the stakeholders. Of course, the PLN, our national electric seed company, we, we think about the tariff per KWH because we haven't yet uh, known, understand, and uh, well informed about the, the tariff for KWH. 
and then the continuity and the quality of supply. Because uh, if there is something happen with the uh, supply of the PLN, maybe it's a problem for, for us we, because we have to charge with the diesel or a generator to, to supply the electric. And then, of course, as bus operator, we need the support from the PLN to, to, to get the uh, uh, more reasonable investment from the grid to our depot. And the, from the depot, I built the infrastructure charging and the charging station. And of course, in, is, uh, in Jakarta, the strategic business unit of municipal government is uh, Transjakarta, and maybe a difference with other province. Uh, we have to negotiate about the tariff, uh, rupiah per kilometer or other approach. And of course, the contracts uh, and support that we have uh, now uh, right and the obligation of the, each parties. And the third, how about the operation planning and payment? How about the productivity? the daily operation of the buses, uh, the target, how about the uh, payment after the operation, for example, in one month. Then the fourth, the, how about the infrastructure to support the electric buses. For the transport department, then, of course, we, according to our experience and uh, hands-on experience, is uh, how about the conducive regulation to support the bus operator to operate the EV bus and hopefully the transport department become the very free uh, amongst the uh, bus operator or between the bus operator with the SB, SB of municipal government. And then transport department can provide the roadmap for bus fleet by propulsion type, short, medium, long term, so we can see how we, we, we achieve about the Indonesia for uh, better or green uh, energy. And then for the bus dealer, for the EV buses, uh, we have uh, faced the limitation of the choice of bus dealers. And as we know, we, we have a BYD basis, uh, 30 units now, and uh, we're still in the progress uh, to negotiation with the uh, Jakarta. For the bus dealers, of course, the after sales service experience and capability, and the important things about the lead time of battery and spare parts uh, supply. And how about the charging stations? Because the charging stations is part of the electric buses. And uh, of course, the system and the, the technical aspect of the charging station is sometimes a different brand of buses is different of the type of charging station. And then the other stakeholder is bank or leasing. Of course, for the bank or leasing company, uh, they based on the business feasibility study and projections. And then the second for the risk management, of course, for us or other bus operators, uh, bank will evaluate our bankability. And the important things about the equity participation of bus operators, because uh, bank uh, finance us 100%, maybe we have to provide 20, 25, 15% to be uh, equity in the condition. And then we also uh, negotiate or discuss with the insurance company that is, is related about the past experience of the claim. And then for the electric buses, uh, maybe the, the issue of uh, battery, the lead time of the battery become important issue. For example, if we take about the all risk, maybe the all risk is partial all risk or all risk with uh, subject to condition. And then the insurance company we face about the process of claim, uh, including spare part and battery. Uh, bodybuilder that uh, uh, Stefan has uh, mentioned before, so of course the EBAS model, quality, lead time. And then uh, mentioned before of Stefan about the tax tariff of importation of the beast. So why we buy the CBU beast from the BYD, not the chassis buses and build usually in the Lakshana as a builder. The, the other stakeholder that is important is the electricity contractors, because as bus operators, we are new. We don't know how but to build the charging infrastructures. Of course, we have to hire or we have to invite the electricity contractor to build about that. They have to make connection with the grid from the PLN to the our depot, maybe for the, uh, and then, 
we, we build the ASE today say to make the, the electricity connection for the charging and uh, support the operational of the e-bus. Charging system management is very important and is part of the new for, for, for bus operator to adopt to adaptations. How about the other parties? Of course, uh, for the import bus, we face about the custom and permit. How about the tire management? Because sometimes, as my study about the experience, we hire a third party to, to do the tire management. And then how about the body reparation for uh, maybe minor uh, accident or uh, about the uh, coordination of operation with the insurance company? And then, of course, the important thing to make uh, the level of service that bus is very clean and everything is okay. We we also uh, hire bus uh, launching operators. This is the conclusion that we, we have to understand and have the stakeholders and also the audience of the webinars. The implementation first, the implementation for the electric bus in, in Jakarta or in in other provinces, for example, in Bali or in Jakarta, is collaboration is the key of success. Collaboration between bus operator, bus dealer, and offers to governments or SBU or government uh, municipal company, we have made a good collaboration not in the win-win uh, uh, situation, win-win relationship. And the second, we have to prepare and clear in the short or medium and long-term vision, blueprint for bus fleet by propulsion type. So we can make a roadmap, we can prepare infrastructure to uh, fulfill, to achieve that roadmap. The third, very important, is the technical and business feasibility approach. Because the, the investment is very high, we have to make the calculations, we have to mitigate for the risk and that approach is uh, fair enough because everybody or every company has to do about the technical and business feasibility approach. Uh, hopefully the, the approach not the using the political or the power approach to, to, to implement about that and the impacts for the bus operators or others that uh, suffer about the operation after the uh, first operation of the EV bus. And the fourth, very important is the portion of Bandi time. Your time is up. Uh, okay. Probably uh, half, Hari, half. Uh, number five is the development of e bus infrastructure, and then six is step by step study and implementation. And of course, the seven e bus is high investment and more riskier than diesel bus. And eight bus operators and related stakeholders have to be ready for the implementation of e bus for better futures. Thank you, Bahari. Thank you, Pandi. And uh, uh, we have at least, uh, in total, we have 20 uh, questions, but uh, 10 has already been answered online by uh, Pa Samsi and Pa, pa Stefan. And, uh, but before, before checking the question from the audiences, I, I have a question for all of you. Uh, the idea to migrate uh, gasoline bus and uh, diesel bus to uh, electric bus is to reduce, one is to reduce the air pollution in the city. The second is actually is to, to reduce the carbon emission of Indonesia in total. And uh, my question is uh, how, how do you uh, or how are you uh, confidence with this idea to migrate to electric uh, vehicles and uh, especially bus buses, please. Pak Samsi, then Pak uh, Pak Stefan, and then Pak Andi. Uh, thank you, Pak Hari. In terms of uh, the confidence, actually, uh, I I could not say uh, more that uh, for now we have uh, quite. Uh, our, we have no high confidence for that for now because uh, as our actually we have uh, quite uh, a good expectation in uh, early 
2020 about the availability of the the uh, 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 technology and buses in Indonesia. But then when we start to uh, do the piloting, it seems that it is not easy for industry to provide uh, buses in Indonesia. However, uh, we just need to uh, calculate the time. So when when are we going to start with this? Because uh, first, uh, for now, uh, aside from that, we have no uh, uh, strong industry in uh, providing the the bus, uh, the EV bus. We already have a, a quite, quite a good uh, industry in uh, IC bus. Then now we need to uh, to see. Uh, when when is going to be uh, the best best time in terms of uh, providing the technology and also and uh, seeing the uh, possible finance for for this because we know that the the uh, uh, ownership costs maybe is quite high so especially for the the uh, when we try to provide the new buses for the for the system at the moment so uh, still sometimes to to uh, do the analysis for this and do the prediction, I think. Okay. Thank you, Pak Samsi. Pak uh, Stefan, Pak Stefan, please. Yeah, I think it's um it's 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 rather difficult to answer the question, but um of course there is a concern where when we shift from diesel bus to the uh, the electric bus. Um, the problem would be before when we do the diesel bus, of course, it will give a lot of pollution um, from the bus itself. Um, but then when we shift to the electric bus, um, we have to actually know where this is electric uh, energy is coming from. If it's coming from a um, an electric power plant that is um, using, for example, coal, then probably it will probably it will be the same the same amount of air pollution produced um, uh, the, in total as a system. So I think we have to really look uh, very closely and very uh, diligently on on to make sure that the whole system really uh, creates a better or a greener uh, environment. Yeah, with the shift of the electric bus. Um, I think I think that's that's a bigger question uh, that needs to be answered. Um, I, I don't think I can answer that question very detailed, uh, unfortunately. But that is one concern that I have. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, right now with the diesel bus, and this year Indonesia is um, going to Euro four standard. I think that is also one solution where we can also minimize the air pollution. Um, so reducing the air pollution um, compared to the one before when we are still implementing the Euro 2 um, requirements. So I think for electric bus, I can see that this is like an, a pilot project. Um, of course, we have to embrace the change in the future. We have to make sure we are ready for, for electric era. Um, especially when this power plant is generated from from energy source that is more environmentally uh, friendly, so I think it's 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 a good idea. But then to shift this to electric bus in a very quick uh, time manner, it will be yeah, it it has to be very careful. Yeah, Stephen, thank you, Andy, please. Thank you, Pak Hari. Yeah, as a bus operator, I see the technical and implementation uh, aspects for the how to support about the better environment, green energy, and reduce the air pollution and the impact for the health or other things. Uh, as I present before that uh, in my presentations, uh, we ready. 30 buses, uh, electric buses. We have ready to buy uh, 30 buses, uh, 30 bus. And also we we discuss, for example, there are many uh, bus dealers that uh, 
we discuss like uh, not only for BYD, also the Higer and maybe uh, Volvo and everything that we, we also discuss to, to provide or to implement the basis. And we support for the government that uh, to implement the EV basis. And we are not in the planning process now, Bahari. We have invested and now we are process uh, to build the charging infrastructures. And then after the important things is the, the milestone, the very important is the contracts, uh, cooperation contracts with, between us and Transjakarta. After everything is settled in the contracts, maybe we, we can continue to, to build the infrastructures and ready to, to operate the EV bus. Yeah, with the, some a challenge, some limitation, we have to implement because uh, we cannot uh, move backward, but we have to forward to, to uh, support the governments or regulation. And, and we are ready. You can see our buses in our depot, 30 EV bus. And we still uh, concentration to, to negotiate with other uh, bus dealers. This is the okay. target. Yeah, thank you, Pandi. Okay, we will we will answer the questions uh, from the audiences uh, on the Q and A uh, column. Uh, but I'm sorry, probably we, we cannot answer all the questions, but we will choose some of them. Uh, first is. From Pak Purwo Handoko, uh, for the, the question is for Pak Andi. Uh, Pak Andi, you can also see the question and answer column. Is Mayasari part of the Jakarta's uh, EV trial? The question. What What's your opinion so far after trying, Pak Andi? Uh, until now, we haven't yet. Uh, doing trial about the EV mm. buses. Uh, the EV buses has been trial is, uh, I think, two dealers that uh, at first the uh, uh, BYD from the Bakti Opa mm. and then uh, Higer buses from Higer Indonesia has the trial with uh, between the Transjakarta. And we are as a bus operator has uh, not yet operate any kind of EV buses, but we have uh, ready to invest the effect bus. And after we settle the contract between uh, Maisari Bhakti and Raja and build the infrastructure of charging, and then after that, uh, after the uh, BAST or uh, Brita Acara Seratrima acceptance, uh, we can uh, operate based on the operating planning from Jakarta to us. And we haven't yet a trial yet. We haven't trial yet about the EV mm -hmm. buses. Okay, thank you, uh, Andy. And I choose a question from Pak Arif PPD. Uh, here is the question: How to overcome the limitations between gross e bus, electric bus weight, and the carrying capacity of the road in Indonesia? It's uh, probably for Pak Stefan or Pak Andi, I think. Silakan Pak Stefan. So the last question on the column. What is it? The Pak, the, ah. from, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, there's some strategy that we, um, we have done so far, as I already mentioned in my presentation, uh, of course we, we are forced to use a more lightweight materials, both on the structure and the panelings. So as I also mentioned, the one prototype of electric bus that we have built uh, together with PYT, uh, we managed to save about 1.3 tons compared to the uh, weight of the regular uh, bus body using the steel uh, structure. So that is one um, strategy. And then we have also been discussing about this with the Ministry of Transportation. And at the moment, they do have some solution where they give uh, a tolerance, especially for the electric bus on the uh, weight limitations. So I believe there will be a 5% uh, 
weight tolerance above the weight limitation that that um, that is uh, applied right now. So hopefully this two strategy will will overcome this uh, weight limitation uh, in the future for electric bus. Okay, thank you, Pa uh, Stefan. Next is uh, from uh, Pa Nyoman or Ibu Nyoman, the Pa Nyoman. For electric bus, uh, technology is available in terms of investment. As long as it's beneficial for investor, they will try. They will come. The question is, uh, what kind of game or regulation and other facilities, such as incentives, etc., that attract investor to involve? This is about how to attract investor uh, outside from or from Indonesia. Uh, inside Indonesia, uh, this question can be answered three of you. Uh, Pak Pak Samsi dulu, and then Pak Pak Andi, and then Pak Stefan. Silakan, Pak Samsi. Okay, thank you, Pak Hari. Uh, yeah, this is a very important question. Actually, we are we are finding it is not only for the bus; it is also happening for motorcycles and uh, mm -hmm. uh, passengers passenger cars. Actually, uh, when we encourage people to shift from uh, ICE to EV, there are numbers of incentives will be provided. Uh, in the bus itself, because uh, when, we, when we talk about transportation system, there's no transportation system that provides a good benefit for, uh, for the uh, private sectors, unless there is, uh, there is subsidized. So uh, I think it, uh, for for this uh, situation, actually, we are we are looking at the 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 possible uh, the best economic uh, uh, calculation that might be provided to possibly uh, uh, subsidy uh, the the service of buses. Otherwise, it won't be uh, it won't be easy for uh, uh, private sectors to or investors to to come to uh, get uh, get in. Uh, and investing in the in the uh, transportation sector, especially when they are using uh, 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 EV buses for now. But I'm not sure uh, if there is uh, maybe uh, say that we can improve the technology. Then it coming uh, the bus is becoming uh, much uh, uh, good uh, cost cost effective than now. Yeah, there is a possibility, but I think the subsidy will be will be required. Okay. Thank you, Pa uh, Samsi. And then next, Pa Andy, please. The same question. How to attract the investors? Andy. Pertanyaannya ke arah mana, Pak Hari? Uh, pertanyaannya, uh, what is kind of gain? Or regulations and other facilities such as incentives, for example, that attract investor to involve to invest. Uh, first thing first, in our point of view, uh, hmm. we have to get the better tariff for the electricity. Hmm. Maybe it needs the subsidy, uh, and then to support us, uh, PLN, the electric company, can give uh, like a guarantee that about the continuity and the quality of the supply of the electricity. Because we have to build the infrastructure charging in our depot, Bahari. Mm. And it will uh, depend how can get the, uh, the electricity from the grid to our uh, trafo in the in the pool or in the mm. uh, uh, And now, uh, as uh, some question asking about the investment for the other parties to, to support about about that, I think in uh, my sorry, but uh, from point of view, maybe in the first time. And we have to invest uh, directly because it's in part of the uh, calculation of the mm -hmm. uh, tariff to the 
cooperation between Maya Sari Bakti and uh, Transjakarta. So we, we do the investment by our uh, self. And the important things, Pak uh, Hari, we, we have to know about the roadmap of the proportion type of the bus, uh, bus in Jakarta or Indonesia. Because we, we have experience, we have uh, invested in the CNG buses. It's a, the goal is for the green energy, but after we invest the uh, CNG buses, uh, and then we come back again to the diesel buses. And now we start to the EV buses. I hope, we hope, we cannot uh, repeat or uh, the past experience. After the EV buses, we come back again to the diesel buses. I think it's uh, uh, not built the potential for the electric buses to support the green energy or uh, that the uh, president decree about the uh, blue sky everything. So the important thing is the step by step and we have to implement, evaluate and move forward, not move backward and forward, backward and forward and we cannot uh, get the credential about the electric bus and of course uh, the big players like the European buses uh, brands not yet come into Indonesia to sell or to to promote the the electric buses. We 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 face some buses the dealers from the uh, China company that we, they are ready more ready than, than mm. the European in, in Indonesia especially. Thank you, Pak. Thank you, Pak Andi. Pak Stefan, silakan Pak Stefan. The same question. Yeah, I think most investor would be uh, very concerned with the um, with the initial investment and then this of course uh, relates to the uh, long commitment of the government um, on the continuation of using the electric bus in the long term so i think there should be some kind of a guarantee of the like a, a long term program uh, for the government to ensure that the investor will, because the problem with electric bus is, I think already mentioned by Mr. Mm. Andy, is that you need to have a very, uh, you have to put a big initial investment, both for the, the units itself and then for the charging uh, infrastructure. Um, so I think that requires uh, certainty for the, uh, the program of shifting to the electric bus in the long term, uh, both by having a subsidies or also for the, uh, the long-term um, planning from, from the government in using this um, electric bus. Okay. Yeah. Th thank you. Um, I would like to extend also the question to pa Bakili. If you, if you like to answer it, please, pa Bakili. Okay, Pari. Uh, we see um, we are as an organizer. I think for the um, this is a kind of opportunity. So we do the exhibition in order to show to the worldwide to see that Indonesia mm. already start uh, to have uh, this uh, this kind of product. So especially for the EV bus. So. This is one of the way. So we uh, we see uh, so try we try to cooperate with the uh, bus world, and bus world is one of initiate for this event. I think Mr. Hari, uh, Mr. Jian is one of the experts for this kind of the uh, issue. Perhaps Mr. Jian will be have a lot of, of experiences, and and can I suggest to Mr. Jian maybe yes. a very worldwide knowledge about this uh, bus industry. Okay. <laughs> Bayan, please. Bayan. Good, uh, good afternoon to, to everybody and congratulations on a very good, uh, on a very good webinar. Um, as Busworld and, and Busworld Foundations, we, we follow this evolution um, very closely, of course. So bringing investments and bringing visions and, and ideas and experience and best practical testimonials to, to Indonesia is one of the main goals of the bus world edition that will take place in March in, in, in Jakarta, right? We will bring in foreign experiences, yeah. but also as bus world foundation, we have created a 
model to calculate the total cost of ownership for as well the operators, private and public. It's a model that will be presented during the, the Bus World Conference there. And the model allows you to make a good choice in what kind of technology. And I'm not only mm. talking about the vehicles, I'm also talking about the types of charging infrastructure. So it will provide you a good overview of what the total cost of ownership is and compare the one technology uh, with the other. Um, it allows also to see where the biggest costs will occur in the transition to uh, to electric mobility. Now, we all kind of know by the experience we have right now that the maintenance cost will go down. The investment, the original investment might be, be double, but there is uh, other risks uh, involved as well due to, to factors we don't know yet. And all these factors have to do with the energy management in the bus depot. The energy management in the bus depot is crucial for the success of EV bus operations. Um, and therefore, uh, this TCO model will be very valuable, but also the experiences from, from others will be, uh, will be clear. Now, first question and first messages that we have as Bus World Foundation to, to the authorities that are asking our industry to make the transition to zero emission is, is two things. And Stefan already clearly mentioned one of them, it is, please note that bus operators are energy users, yes. not energy yes. producers. So that means that we work with the electricity that is provided to us. If the electricity that is provided to a bus operator is indeed produced still carbon-based and still polluting, then the effects on, on the air quality by making the shift to electromobility is absolutely nothing. So we kindly ask the government to start with electromobility and with uh, the implementation of electric bus systems in those areas where you can ensure that the electricity is clean energy, is not carbon-based produced. That is one thing. And second thing, Electromobility is absolutely important and it bears the full support of bus world. But we also have to notice that making the shift of 10% of the car miles, that is the number of miles that is driven in an individual car, that if we can make the switch of less than 10% of the car miles to bus miles, even in a Euro 4 bus, then the effect on the air pollution is exactly the same as electrifying the entire bus fleet as exists right now. This growth of ridership in bus fleet would also be very supportive to the transition to electromobility in, in, in buses. So besides the transition to e-buses, the transition from individual car use to collective car modes is absolutely important. And the two lines should be worked on at the same time. That okay. is our very, very loud and clear question to, to all governments who are yeah. supporting yeah. our industry towards uh, electromobility. Now, for the operators and for the manufacturers, one of the difficulties is the fact that there is a lot of new stakeholders coming into the industry. And as Mr. Andy Otario very clearly said, collaboration is crucial. So we have to get to know all these stakeholders uh, inside our own countries, but also internationally. And one of the services, the new services that we see and that we will introduce to Bus World is services to which operators can outsource the entire energy management when making the switch to electromobility. So that means that you can hire an external company pay them a fixed amount per month or per year or whatever you agree on, but they take the risk on the entire energy management. That can mean building the charging infrastructure, optimizing the energy management in the bus depot and taking the risk away from the bus operator. I don't know what are the exact conditions to do so, but this is something we have to talk about 
during bus roll, getting to know each other and see what the return on our investment there can be. So thank you very much for thank the you. opportunity for saying this. Thank you, Pat pa Yan. Okay, I think time is up. It's uh, past uh, three minutes. And uh, I think uh, after listening the presentation and discussion, I think uh, this is a good start. And uh, so many things that have to be done by all stakeholders, not only by the government, but also by the producers and also the operators. And I'm just wondering, I have a question actually that probably you can uh, answer offline. Why we don't start with the green hydrogen technology? Why start with the electricity? That's, uh, I'm just curious uh, on that answer. Okay, thank you. I give it back to Ba Li Yun. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Selamat sore. Terima kasih Pak Hari. Terima kasih telah memanage interesting session. Now, we would like to ask Mr. Yan Deman, Managing Director of Buzzword Foundation, to present the closing remark of today's webinar. Yan, the time is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Leun. I think I, I just uh, made quite a long statement saying what exactly I, I wanted to say. But um, allow me to take this opportunity to thank the three excellent uh, speakers. It is very good and very indicative for uh, what Buzzworld wants to be. It is creating a platform where the bus manufacturers, the bus operators and the authorities can meet. During the bus roll conference in March in Jakarta, we will do exactly the same, organize not very big conferences, not with 500 participants, but with smaller groups where we can talk into the depth of the, of the discussion and bring knowledge and knowledge institutions from Indonesia and from other uh, sites together. So I look very much forward to all these, um, to all these opportunities and I look forward to, to see you there. Congratulations to, to all the speakers with a very, very good content, very relative. And thank you to the Basral team in Indonesia for this excellent organization. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we would like to keep this moment as a great memory, hence we will take a picture with the speakers, Mr. Jan Deman from Basral Foundation, Mr. Bakili from Game Indonesia and Mr. Hari, our moderator. To all speakers, Mr. Yan, Mr. Baki, and Mr. Harry, please stand by with your camera on. Okay, good. Now, please smile and let's capture this great moment. All right, operator, get ready. One, two, three, capture. Thank you, everyone. Now, we are presenting our gratitude towards all speakers and moderator for their participations in today's webinar by delivering virtual certificates. For certificates is for Bapak Samsi Gunarta. Terima kasih atas kehadiran Bapak. Second is for Pak Stefan Arman. Thank you to be here with us, Pak Stefan. Thank you, thank you. Next certificate is for Pak Andi Utario Putro. Terima kasih telah menjadi salah satu pembicara kita hari ini, Pak Andi. Terima kasih, Bu Rio. And our last certificate is presented to our moderator, Pak Hari Suryadi. Terima kasih telah yeah. memandu sesi yang menarik, Pak Hari. And for all attendees who like to have the presentation materials, please access the link shown on your screen. And through this opportunity, we like to deliver our gratitude to all supporting partners and media. The Ministry of Industry, the Republic of Indonesia, the Ministry of Transportation, the Republic of Indonesia, Association of Indonesian Carousery Industries, Askarindo, 
Ikatan Pengusaha Otobus Muda Indonesia IPOMI, Indonesian Transport Society MTI, Institute for Transportation and Development Policy ITDP, and Halte Bus as our strategic partner. And we also like to appreciate all supports given from all of great attendees. Terima kasih. Ladies and gentlemen, we like to inform you that we would hold the exhibition of bus work in 23 to 25 March 2022 at Jakarta International Expo Kemayoran, Jakarta. Please visit and have a look on our great event. And our session seven of Buzzword webinar will be held with the main theme, the transformation of Indonesian buses to new clean energy part one. It will be held on Wednesday, 23 February, 2022. Please make sure to join us for the current news of bus industry. On behalf of Game Indonesia and Buzzword Foundation, Thank you to all speakers, moderator, and attendees for being with us today. See you at the next webinar. I'm Bun Liun from Ingame Indonesia. Good afternoon. Thank you. Ya, terima kasih semuanya. Terima kasih, kasih semuanya. Terima kasih Pak Samsi, terima kasih, Pak Ari, Pak Sehan. Terima kasih Andi. semua. Sehat-sehat. Luar sehat. sehat. biasa, Pak. Ya. Oke, terima kasih banyak. Sampai ketemu di Mart. Ya. ya, sampai ketemu lagi. Sampai jumpa. Hmm. Saya live ya. This is Jakarta, Indonesia, one of the world's biggest mega cities in an urban cluster of 30 million inhabitants. In the bouncing heart of Southeast Asia, Buzzworld landed for a tremendous first time international mobility bus and coach exhibition. I have a very good feeling. Buzzworld being right on time in an extremely challenging era for a country of 260 million inhabitants. It became the key factor for a smash hit in the core of the collective transport and bus and coach market. The first edition welcomed the biggest and most popular bus and coach manufacturers and bodybuilders of Indonesia. Mercedes-Benz, Volvo Buses, New Armada and Luxana. All of the key brands were here and 7,000 unique visitors came to the venue together with the international professional press. Launching new products like the Volvo B11R or the Mercedes-Benz OF917, updating the audience and the press, open air ceremonies for new buses and presenting companies with accessories and components. It all took part in the JI Expo on Buzzworld Indonesia 2019. The market for buses and coaches in Indonesia was clearly waiting for an exhibition like this. The two core organizing partners of Buzzworld International, the Federation of Young Bus and Coach Operators, IPOMI, and the Federation of Bus Bodybuilders in Indonesia, Askarindo, did a great job in bringing together the operators, the decision makers, and all lovers of buses and coaches in the country. Checking out the latest designs of buses and coaches, components and spare parts on Buzzworld is easily combined with attending presentations, seminars and expert classes at a conference organized by Buzzworld Academy. 350 people from 30 countries came to listen to speakers and international mobility specialists from more than 15 countries. Buzzworld Southeast Asia 2019 exceeded all expectations and was a real bullseye for the bus and coach community.